Hey everyone, this is Phil White, and my topic was folksonomies. I chose uh, to do a bibliography on folksonomies because up until a couple of weeks ago, I didn't know what a folksonomy was, and I'd heard the term, uh, but I didn't really realize exactly what it is. Uh, even though I had seen it on the internet, on the internet, and elsewhere many times. So let me just start off by uh, telling you guys what it means. The term itself is a combination of the two words folk and taxonomy. Um, so meaning folk meaning people and taxonomy meaning classify. So it's, it's a user-led classification process. Uh, a more formal definition from one of my uh, one of the articles I reviewed was the collective grouping of tags assigned by an aggregate of users of a particular website. You see it very often on sites like uh, Flickr or Delicious, and a lot of others have started using folksonomies. Um, now, in terms of libraries, the debate is should libraries start using social tagging uh, to aid in findability and uh, cataloging and classification of library materials. On the extreme end of that, someone could say, well, why do we even need catalogers if we can uh, you know, crowdsource it and do uh, a folksonomy? So the, the, the answer, the consensus is, that libraries should use folksonomy, but with some caveats because it's not it's not specific enough to accurately capture everything that say Library of Congress subject headings would capture. Um, about my bibliography, most of the articles I reviewed compared user generated terms for specific records to cataloger assigned terms like uh, Library of Congress subject headings for those same items. And like I said earlier, the consensus is that users generate far more terms and they're often very general. And the overlap between cataloger assigned terms is typically pretty low uh, compared to the uh, social tags. Social tags will generate probably for every one subject heading probably 20 social tags would be generated and a lot of times when the, the research that I reviewed when they compared them only like a tiny fraction of the social tags turned out to be the same term used by catalogers. And most of the research that I reviewed uh, used a tool called Library Thing. And I wanted to share Library Thing uh, with the class. It is basically a plugin for your, your catalog, for a library catalog that can allow for social tagging. You can let your, your patrons, uh, as they browse the records in the catalog, apply social tags to the catalog as well. So that was a really cool tool that I didn't know about uh, that I thought was definitely worth sharing. And that's how a lot, of, a lot of the researchers in my articles did their analysis. I wanted to share one other thing with, with you too. Uh, most of the articles that I read uh, had a relatively small uh, sample. Uh, the, but the best one I read was from the Journal of Information Science. And uh, the title was User Tags versus Expert Assigned Subject Terms, a Comparison of Library Thing Tags and Library of Congress Subject Headings by uh, Lou and... Uh, I don't know how to pronounce their name. Uh, but anyway, I'll link to it in, in Blackboard. Uh, but this one was great because the, 
the authors compared over 8,000 book records. And only about 3% of those records uh, had tags and terms that overlapped. So that was this was probably the most important one that I found. And it was by far the, uh, the most comprehensive study. And if there's going to be one article that you read on folksonomies and how libraries are using them and, and all of the implications, I would recommend checking this one out. So back to my presentation. Just to conclude, most of the authors in my bibliography recommended that folksonomies should be implemented by libraries because they improve equity of access and findability, especially to unique populations. One example was a study that I read over uh, that was examining how minority groups like LGBT or uh, smaller ethnic populations in London were, were using uh, social tags. So, for example, they might, depending on the user's background, they might have a completely different uh, point of reference for the type of terms they might use to access a certain material compared to, like, majority groups. So it was... So folksonomies were particularly um, applicable to people like that. And that's the real benefit of having such a huge um, array of terms for one record, is that so many people can find it. So that's really the, the uh, usefulness of the, the generalized terms produced by social tagging. Um, but most of my authors agreed that it should be a supplement and not a replacement, because... There are some drawbacks uh, to social tagging, and a lot of times social tags can be like specific to the person that that uh, created a certain tag. It could be like a personal item, like read this later or something like that, so that it might not even be applicable. And a suggestion for class would be that I think it would be cool if we did a social tagging assignment in class, maybe similar to what a lot of uh, the researchers I reviewed did, and maybe we could start with a, a social an item on a social tag, folksonomy, using a folksonomy classification, and then maybe part two could be uh, doing the same thing with uh, and comparing the subject terms that a cataloger assigned. So that's it. Uh, I learned a lot from from this bibliography and I hope you guys learned something from this presentation and definitely recommend a few of my articles and I'll post some links in Blackboard. Thanks for listening.